A group of scientists resurrect a veteran military soldier through biotechnology and use him for their conspiracy. But what happens when the soldiers figure out the purpose of his resurrection? Let's find the answer in the movie. In Mombasa, Kenya, the U.S. military Air Force troops, including the veteran soldier Ray Garrison, are on a rescue mission. They are about to take down a group of mercenaries who have already killed four hostages and disposed of their remains. As they cannot locate the target, the troops receive a sit rep from their comrades that they will move to another location. Meanwhile, Ray finds the target area and hears the mercenaries talking inside a building. This prompts him to stand outside and impinge on the door where the mercenaries make a response by firing from inside. Ray takes out a stun grenade from his pocket and throws it inside, making the mercenaries temporarily blind as well as lose hearing and balance. He then immediately asks, despite the lieutenant's order, to hold on to the breach, single-handedly taking out all the targets with his rifle before going searching for further hostages. As Ray inspects the ground floor, he suddenly hears creaks on the ceiling, so he goes upstairs. On the second floor, he reloads his rifles and shoots more of the mercenaries. Once they are all down, Ray throws a smoke grenade into a room and silently enters, where he finds the last mercenary pointing his gun at the hostage's head. He slowly approaches them, but stops when the mercenary orders him to drop his rifle, which he follows without further ado. Afterward, he inquires about what the mercenary wants, learning that he needs Ray's forces to pull back and a helicopter to flee with. Ray orders his teammate to hold fire while negotiating a deal with the mercenary before providing him with a chopper. He asks the mercenary where he keeps the phone, and as soon as the guy turns his head to show him, Ray pulls out the gun and shoots him. This leads Ray and his troops to a successful rescue operation as they get their target hostage secured from the mercenaries. After that, the U.S. military aircraft transports them to Aviano Air Base in Italy, where the U.S. Air Force has permitted them to spend their vacation anywhere inside the country. Since that is the case, Ray feels happy to be able to reunite with his wife, Gina Garrison, who is waiting for his arrival on their base. They will finally get the opportunity to spend time together and enjoy the holiday by going to a coastal village in Italy located on the Amalfi Coast. Once Ray and Gina reach their destination, they immediately drop themselves at a hotel to get some rest. The following day, when Ray wakes up, there is a letter from Gina telling him that she is going out to get something for their breakfast. While waiting for Gina to return, he goes to take a bath when suddenly two mercenaries appear from within the room and abduct him. Soon after, Ray discovers he is being held captive by a bunch of mercenaries while strapped to a chair. Martin Axe, the leader of the group, eventually appears in front of Ray and confronts him about the involvement of the U.S. military in their objective to take hostages. Ray remains silent, so Martin presents him with Gina, who is also abducted by them, and presses him once more for information about who gave him the heads up to intervene in their hostage taking in Mombosa. But Ray still refused to disclose anything, claiming he was merely following orders and had no idea who might have tipped him off. In light of this, Martin brutally murders Gina in front of him, who promises vengeance after witnessing the act. But before he can do anything, Martin already takes his life. And yet, Ray wakes up later at the Rising Spirit Technologies Laboratory, where he is in an experiment led by the head scientist, Dr. Emil Harding. Harding is taken aback when Ray regains consciousness and remains stable, so he and his colleague, KT, immediately visit him. Once inside Ray's room, Harding explains to him that the U.S. military usually lets RST take over disabled military veterans and other military patients so that the cutting-edge biotechnology here can cure them. But Ray's case is exceptional because he was the test subject of their experimental nanite technology, which brings him back from the dead. This makes him the first successfully resurrected RST human subject of the RST's bloodshot program to have his whole bloodstream replaced with nanites. This piques Ray's interest, and he demands Harding to break down every aspect of nanotechnology for him. 
After showing him the operating room and saying they work on developing methods to increase the speed and strength of the military's armed forces, Harding then brings Ray to his private laboratory room and suddenly slashes his hand to demonstrate the nanites. He reveals that the nanites are helping his body recover from injuries and it can also make him stronger. However, Harding cautions Ray that his nanites can run low, so they need to be recharged regularly to keep them from wearing out and causing him to die again. As the demonstration is over, he brings Ray to the rehabilitation center, introducing him to fellow patients like former U.S. Army Ranger Marcus Tibbs, who enhanced his sight with ocular prosthetics, and former Navy SEAL Jimmy Dalton, who engineered his feet. Even though Ray has already met KT, a female ex-swimmer for the United States Navy, Harding introduces her again, saying that KT's enhancements are her larynx and trachea, which allows her to breathe through clavicle-mounted respirations. Later at night, Ray struggles to sleep because he dreams of Gina and Martin and gets out of bed. He goes to the rehabilitation facility to work out, but stops when he sees KT taking late-night diving. They chat and both decide on having a drink to relieve themselves from trouble sleeping. While imbibing, Ray unexpectedly hears the music Martin played while killing them, and he is immediately taken back to the moment when his wife was murdered. This prompts him to leave the RST and seek revenge for Gina's death by killing Martin. He hacks into RST's system with his nanites and utilizes the information to pinpoint Martin's precise location. When Ray learns that he is in Budapest, hungry, he doesn't waste much time getting there and killing everyone connected to Martin, including the security personnel. Meanwhile, Harding observes Ray on the RST computer screen, witnessing firsthand how effectively Ray dispatches his targets. It is then revealed that Harding plots on making the Bloodshot program successful and eliminating every former associate who betrayed him, using Ray as his weapon. Therefore, he issues an instant order to KT, Tibbs, and Dalton to take Ray back to the facility. Once Ray returns, Harding puts him to sleep and orders Eric, his co-scientist, to begin resetting his nanites and alter his recollection of Gina's death, replacing the person who kills her from Martin to a person named Nick Barris. KT protests this plan of Harding, but he ignores her and even threatens to shut her enhancements down if she tries to get in the way. When Ray awakens again with no memories, Harding pretends to be surprised again and begins reintroducing RST and the new developments in his body. As Harding continues to speak, Ray starts recalling Gina's death, in which he accuses Barris of kidnapping and brutally killing her. Livid, Ray leaves the RST again and follows Barris to East Sussex using his nanites. However, as Harding observes Barris' hideout via computer, he becomes suspicious seeing an unfamiliar man conversing with Barris. So he asks Eric about him and learns that he is Wilfred Wiggins, a skilled programmer and an open source contributor to many of his innovations, including the nanites. This alarms Harding and KT, but their worries escalate when they find out that Wiggins is ordered by Barris to come here because Barris can't stop panicking knowing that Harding will send someone to kill him. He forces Wiggins to place an electromagnetic pulse bomb that can incapacitate Ray in the room. Wiggins then sets it in motion and hands Barris the remote, telling him to wait until the EMP bomb is fully charged before detonating it. Once Barris fully notes the instruction, he orders Wiggins to leave and return to his office. Harding immediately orders Ray to stay away from the place, but something is intercepting their signal. Meanwhile, Ray finally reaches Barris's office and starts accusing him of the murder of his wife, which makes Barris confused, explaining that he is not involved with the murder and the RST is probably lying to him. But with his rebooted memory, Ray refuses to believe Barris and unhesitatingly shoots him. He then attempts to leave the office when suddenly, Wiggins activates the EMP bomb using the other remote control. As a consequence, Ray's nanites shut down, breaking his connection to the RST. When Ray falls to the ground, Wiggins immediately takes him to his office, where he uses higher voltage to wake him up and make his nanites function again. Once Ray awakens, Wiggins clarifies that he is not an enemy and proves it by taking off the bonds on his hands. Seeing that Ray is persuaded, he flips the lights back on and keeps eating his noodles while introducing himself to Ray 
and boasting about his extraordinary coding abilities. He also makes it clear that he is under duress to work for Barris. As Wiggins continues, a slew of conflicting recollections suddenly strikes Ray, in which the identity of the person who murdered Gina blurs. Ray then tells Wiggins about it, and Wiggins explains that RST resurrected him so they could manipulate him and kill every defector of Harding's creation. Now that Ray has figured out the truth, he attempts to return to the RST facility to take down Harding. But Wiggins refuses to release him, claiming that Harding will just take control of Ray and modify his memories to make it look like Wiggins was the one who murdered his wife. Ray then cuts his hand to release several nanites, showing it to Wiggins and asks him to reverse engineer the nanites since he is confident in his ability to reprogram anything. Meanwhile, thinking that Gina is probably alive since his memory has been manipulated, Ray leaves for a while to track her down with a phone Wiggins gives him that can connect to a satellite and make the search easy. On the other hand, having lost contact with Ray, Harding presses Eric, demanding him to fix it. Eric, stressed out and frightened, finds the car Ray is riding. Harding then instructs him to tell Tibbs and Dalton to follow it. Concurrently, Ray finally finds out that Gina is in London and immediately visits her place. He rings the doorbell and Gina opens the door for him. It is a shock to Ray that she is still alive, but it comes as an even bigger shock to him when Gina says they broke up five years ago. She has put the past behind her and begun a new chapter in her life with her loved ones. Ray gets confused at first, but when he sees a child approaching Gina, he suddenly gets silent and leaves without saying goodbye to her. As Ray drives back to Wiggins' office, Tibbs and Dalton find him and intentionally crash their vehicle into Ray's car. Ray jumps out of the car immediately, but Dalton quickly electrifies his nanites by shooting him. Dalton then attempts to fire again, but Ray exerts all his strength to recover his nanites and throws a piece of steel at him. Afterward, Ray flees the area while Dalton grunts in frustration as he cannot catch him. Pissed off, he orders Tibbs to find Ray's location before he drives off to get him again. Tibbs then activates every tracker in the sky, and once he tracks him down, he signals Dalton and keeps providing pins detailing Ray's whereabouts. Dalton catches Ray on the road, but both of them are driven over by a truck, and Dalton's robotic legs break. Conversely, Ray's cybernetic upgrades keep him from ever getting hurt. Ray then rushes over to attack the vulnerable Dalton, but Tibbs thumps a jackknife across his back, rendering him unconscious. Afterward, they take Ray back to the RST laboratory to reset his nanites and modify his memories. After re-establishing contact with Ray and seizing control over him once more, Harding orders KT to capture and kill him to prevent the exposure of the Project Bloodshot, but KT refuses to follow his order. However, Harding deactivates her enhancements and reminds KT that he has the means to eliminate her at any time if she ever again refuses to cooperate. He then activates her enhancement again, and KT has no choice but to do his command in capturing Wiggins. Soon after landing in London, KT gets a call from Eric informing her that Wiggins is in the Monte Verde in Soho and has brought guards with him. KT then takes mental note of Eric's detailed description of Wiggins and patiently awaits his arrival at the front door. When she finally spots him emerging from the building, she launches her strategic attack by borrowing a lighter from him and blowing smoke right at his face until he passes out. KT then knocks off Wiggins' guards to ensure that no one would stop her from capturing Wiggins. But instead of murdering Wiggins, she plots a scheme with him against RST. KT has favored him for his potential assistance in her plan to escape RST's control and destroy the company's bloodshot project. A while later, she returns to the RST facility alone and tells Harding that Wiggins managed to escape since he was anticipating her arrival. She then places the responsibility on Eric, saying he was careless in his search for Wiggins, leading to Harding's disappointment. Having exhausted all other options, Harding implements his backup plan, which entails giving Eric strict instructions to implant in Ray's memories that Wigan must be killed. This prompts KT to storm out of the laboratory and immediately proceed to the control room, where she disrupts Ray's reprogramming process. She alters the SIM and connects it to Wigan's computer to let him do the rest. On the other hand, 
Harding quickly realizes that KT has tampered with the simulator and rushes to the command center to stop her. But it's too late. Wiggins has already gained access to the RST administration and takes complete control of the awakened Ray. In preparation for Harding's arrival in the control room, KT suits up in body armor laden with smoke grenades. Once inside, Harding makes another attempt to use his remote to shut down KT's rebreather only to find that he has been locked out. KT throws the smoke grenade at him and runs out of the command center. Afterward, she initiates phase two of their operation and destroys the RST technologies using canisters. Meanwhile, Harding informs Dalton and Tibbs that KT has gone rogue and Ray is awake and offline and commands them to find Ray, shut him down, and eliminate him if necessary. In the light of this, Dalton and Tibbs instantly put on their combat gears and grab their high-tech weaponry. Tibbs tracks down Ray with the help of the cybernetic eyes monitoring system while Dalton is on the mission of bringing him to heal. As they begin their task, Tibbs spots Ray on his way to the 74th floor level and notifies Dalton. Dalton, anticipating Ray's arrival on the floor, activates his advanced technology weapon and waits for an opportunity to attack. As expected, a battle breaks out between the two. However, it soon becomes clear that Ray is too powerful to be stopped alone, causing them difficulty recapturing him. Their battle gets more intense when the building begins to collapse and Dalton lets Tibbs fall even though he hears him yelling for aid. Dalton has no remorse and is solely focused on destroying Ray, but also gets killed when Ray falls, dragging him off the building. Ray, on the other hand, survives due to the nanites that protect him from damage. Afterward, he prevents Harding from driving away by throwing Dalton's artificial leg extension in his direction. This causes Harding to get out of the car and pull out his modified weapon to fire at him, trying to wear off the nanites in Ray's system. But Ray does not worry about him getting killed and proceeds to walk toward Harding. That forces Harding to reload his gun with a new grenade launcher and fire at him again. He expects that Ray will finally stop since his nanites levels are depleting. However, Ray is eager to eliminate Harding despite knowing he can almost put himself at risk of death once the nanites in his body overclock and get destroyed. He pulls the pin on a grenade that the nanites disassembled and detonates it just as Harding manages to choke him, ensuring their mutual demise. After a while, Ray wakes up and sees Wiggins sitting beside him who manages to bring him back to life. Wiggins also enhanced Ray's physical endurance, making his nanites completely independent. The movie ends with Ray getting a fresh start in life with his new family, Wiggins and KT.